Astrophysics Department and also the Sidewalk Astronomers of Charlottetown. I'm going to be telling you how to set up and operate the telescope that you borrowed from the Library Telescope Program. Hi, I'm Chris Vesey. I'm with the UPEI Department of Computer Science and I'm also a member of Sidewalk Astronomers of Charlottetown. I'm going to be the voice you hear narrating the action as this all happens. So, let's get started. Place the base on a flat surface with the nose or handle end facing forward, just as we have it here. This will hold the telescope. This is the optical tube assembly or OTA. The top side of this faces towards the rear of the stand when mounted. Megan will now demonstrate how to mount the OTA on the stand. Pick up the OTA, being careful to support the rear of it which is heaviest where the mirror is, and place it on the four Teflon pinions in the stand. Allow it to pivot downwards. Make sure that the eyepiece port is on the left hand side as you stand at the rear. This is the right hand side pivot handle. It has no washers. Place this handle in the right hand side pivot hole, and then turn it clockwise until it reaches the end of its travel. Snug it, but not overly tight. It will need to pivot. The left side pivot handle has both washers and a clutch. You install it the same way with the same clockwise turning action. Later on you're going to use this handle to vary the pressure on that side of the scope and hold it in position. This fixes the altitude of the scope. Now we're going to get ready to mount the finder scope. It should already be mounted in a bracket and you should only need to remove the end cap at the objective end and also on the eyepiece end. Be sure not to lose these caps, they're important. In order to mount the finder scope you're going to need to make sure the little silver screw on the right hand side of its bracket has been loosened but isn't completely out. Slide the finder scope in from the bottom and then tighten the screw. It's important to make sure it's really snug, otherwise the finder scope will slide out and crash to the ground, and that's not good for it. Now it's time to prepare the eyepieces. You're going to want to keep the caps for those the same way as you did for the finder scope, which you can see at the right. There's a top and bottom cap for each, the bottom cap of course being nearly clear plastic. Once you have them both uncapped, you're ready to place them on the telescope. Of course, you only use one at a time, but we'll show you how they are stored on the telescope. There's a bracket on the front of the stand that is used to hold up to four eyepieces, three of them that are 1.25 inch like these, and one 2 inch eyepiece in the middle. Now we're going to remove the eyepiece port cap that protects the inside of the telescope. Once the cap is removed, you will notice that there are two screws on either side. These of course have to be loosened to mount the eyepiece. Now we're going to select an eyepiece from the front of the telescope base. We're going to select the 25 millimeter eyepiece which is the taller of the two. It also has the larger ocular lens. We're going to loosen up the screws, slide it in place, and then secure the two screws back again. Some telescopes have a third screw underneath but this one does not. Once it is secure, it is ready to use, and we are going to look into this ocular lens to be able to see things through the telescope. We're now going to remove the front objective cover, which protects the inside of the telescope from dust and debris during storage. It simply pulls off. Remember, don't point this at the sun. You could damage your eyes. We're now going to learn how to align the finder scope on the telescope with what the telescope is actually seeing. So we're going to select a far off, fixed or non-moving light source. Now we're going to actually align the finder scope with the telescope. This requires us to point the telescope at our far off light source. Loosen the clutch so that you can change the altitude of the OTA. Point the OTA and base at the light source. The base pivots and is friction fit. Once you have it close, tighten the clutch somewhat, but not too tight. Then proceed to look through the eyepiece so that you can see if you can see the light source. 
If not, you will have to adjust the scope, the OTA, a few times until you can see the light source in the eyepiece. Make sure it's centered up in the eyepiece and then tighten the clutch to hold it in place. You're then ready to adjust the finder scope. In order to adjust the finder scope, you need to look through it without moving the OTA because it's already pointing at the fixed light source. You should be able to see the light source somewhere in the finder scope, but it will likely need adjustment. You'll notice that there are three protrusions on the bracket which holds the finder scope in place. One is silver and is simply a tensioner. The other two are black screws. Adjusting these screws will move the rear end of the finder scope, which in turn moves the front of the finder scope. Now remember, the finder scope, if it shows to be above, you're actually going to be trying to lower it, which has the effect of raising the rear end. You'll get the hang of it very quickly as you use the screws. Once you have adjusted it correctly, the main scope and the finder scope should both be pointing at that object. Congratulations! You have successfully aligned your telescope and finder scope. You're now ready to look at objects. If you need any more information or assistance using your telescope, contact your local librarian or look in the booklet that accompanies your telescope for information about the Sidewalk Astronomers of Charlottetown or UPEI Physics Astronomy Program. Thank you for borrowing a telescope from the Library Telescope Program and I hope you enjoy your observations of the night sky.